Liver transplantation is a team effort and it takes a lot of people to, in order to have a successful program. Because our outcomes are good, we've been able to attract the best people to come to UCSF and, and help us take care of the patients and I think that's why we do so well. We started the liver transplant program here in 1988 and have done over 2,500 liver transplants. We've had very good success and it was measured by our one-year patient and graft survival. And about 90% of those people are alive at the end of a year. Our patient graft survival or meter exceed the expected for the country. Our problem with the world of liver transplantation is that there's never enough organs available to provide for all the people that need to get a transplant. And so what we try are trying to do is expand the, the ability of patients to get liver transplants by offering living donor liver transplantation. When we talk to patients about living donor transplant, we're really offering them a chance to get transplanted earlier when they're less sick Another advantage of living donor transplant is that if you have somebody that can donate to you, you can plan to go to the operating room, you know, with usually within a month of a donor being identified. So it's not that you have to wait a year or so to get a transplant. Here at UCSF, about 50% of our transplants are for individuals who have complications of hepatitis C. What we've been focused on over the last, you know, more than 20 years really is understanding hepatitis C and what we can do in terms of reducing the chances that an individual who gets a transplant for hepatitis C um, actually um, loses their graft from a current disease. In patients who, are, um, who have living donors, we have a surgery date that can be planned around the treatment. Um, we are now at a position where we can start treatment have the patient's um, viral, viral level become undetectable in the treatment and have their, their virus suppressed going into the transplant. And uh, the majority of those patients will actually be hepatitis C free post-transplant. I needed a liver transplant because I contracted hepatitis C. And um, I knew my wife would be a donor. I was more excited, I think, than he was. I think you were a little nervous for me. Yeah, I was nervous for her. I, at first I didn't want her to do it, but I put myself in her shoes. I would have done it for her. I felt like the whole way through my process as a donor, the staff at UCSF made me feel like if there was any chance that I would be at risk at all, they wouldn't do it. And they, they truly cared for you. Mm -hmm. And they were, care, they were caring for your well-being. And they were concerned. You felt like when you left after being in the hospital for a number of days that they were all your friends, you know, that um, we built a relationship with all these people. We have a very uh, strong team that really works very well together and works to support the patient in a very complete fashion as they contemplate therapy, they undertake therapy, and even after the treatment's completed in order to ensure that it goes smoothly and that we are able to get the best results possible. Uh, UCSF really has a long track record of excellence in patient care and also in research for hepatocellular carcinoma. Liver cancer now accounts for about 25% of all transplants performed in, this, in the United States. One key component of our research focus is really in the selection of candidates for liver transplantation. We have challenged the dogma of one size fit all in the selection of these candidates. We're able to show that a subgroup of patients who respond to downstaging actually show more favorable tumor biology and do very well after transplant. And this UCSF downstaging protocol has been adopted by other transplant centers in our region. I need a liver transplant because my original liver developed cirrhosis and liver cancer uh, due to uh, hepatitis B infection. Once I found out the, my tumor exceeded the Milan criteria, for a while, it was kind of scary. Basically, it says, without the embolization procedure, basically you say, well, you gotta go home and just wait for the end. However, we were able to do this to reduce the, and shrink the tumor to qualify for the uh, transplant which uh, made me feel totally different. It was a static. They were able to put me on the waiting list to receive the transplant. That took about 14 months. Definitely is a new lease on life. I feel I have more energy. Okay, so the only thing is the medication which I have to take daily. Other than that, everything's normal. 
When they undergo transplantation, we tell them that they should expect to be on immunosuppression for their entire life because forever this organ that they're receiving is going to be identified as foreign by the body and therefore their body needs to be trained with medications to not reject the organs. Liver transplant recipients may in particular be able to maintain completely normal liver function without taking these medications. And since these medications have unwanted side effects, we think that would be really beneficial to patients. Our emphasis has been really to study this in children. So we're doing clinical trials. We want to figure out who can successfully stop their immunosuppression and for whom it doesn't work. We've had, very thankfully, excellent results with our trials. In our first trial, we were able to take 12 out of 20 children off of their medications. I think these protocols are very helpful to the patients who participate and they will hopefully yield benefit for other transplant recipients.